subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Hello. In this video, we will discuss the summary of the play, The Playboy of the Western World, written by John Millington Singh. First of all, let's have a brief introduction to the play. The Playboy of the Western World is a three-act play and was first performed in Dublin in 1907. The play is based on an actual incident that once happened in Ireland. A boy in Ireland killed his father with a blow of a spade and fled around Ireland. On reaching there, he begged the natives to help him. The natives of the island hid him for weeks and did not hand over him to the police. The police offered reward, but the people did not betray the murderer. On its first performance, the play caused protests and riots in the theatre. When the play was performed in America, the Irish audience present there strongly opposed the play, which depicted the Irish people and their country in dark colours. Summary of Act First the opening scene takes place near a village on a sea coast of Moyo in a public house where liquor is served. In this scene, we see Pejin is having conversation with Sean Kayo with whom she is engaged to marry. Sean asks her where her father has gone. Pejin replies that he has gone to meet Felix Cullen to attend the Kate Cassidy's wake. She also complains if her father goes to attend the wake, she will be left alone in the house in a state of fear. Sean assures her that after their wedding, she will have no reason to complain because he is not interested in going out at nights. Pejin does not love him and replies him not to feel sure about their marriage. Meanwhile, Pejin starts talking about the manfolk of their place and has no opinion about them. She tells him that the brave people who once lived there are no longer to be found in the place. When Sean mentions the name of Father Rally, the priest, Pejin gets annoyed. She tells him that she is only concerned about her being left alone in the house. Sean then mentions that he has noticed a strange fellow hiding himself in a ditch above on the hill. Meanwhile, Pejin's father Michael James now enters with Feli Cullen and Jimmy Farewell. She rebukes her father for getting ready to attend the Kate Cassidy's wake. She tells her father that it is not safe for a young girl to stay alone in the house when harvest boys, tinkles and soldiers are moving freely. But her father is determined to go to the wake and tell Sean to stay in the house with Peggy. But Sean refused to stay there on account of priest's objections and leaves the shop. Peggy now rebukes his father again for making fun of Sean who feels uneasy because of the priest's objections. Sean now comes hurriedly and informs them that the young fellow whom he saw hiding himself in the ditch above the hill is following him. The young fellow whose name is Christy now appears at the door, frightened and tired. Peggy tells him if he is one of the tinkers who have camped in the valley. Christy tells her that he is not among them but is wanted by the police and is completely tired. Now everybody wants to know why he is wanted by police. Christy mentions his crime and tells them that he has killed his father with a blow of a spade. Now everybody present there is impressed by his crime and calls him a brave boy. Peggy now suggests that Christy should be employed as a servant in the public house. As Michael leaves to attend the Kate Cassidy's wake, Sean now wants to stay in the house because there is now another man with Peggy. But Peggy is so interested in the bravery of Christy that she sends Sean away and does not want him in the house. Peggy now starts praising Christy and calls him a handsome fellow with noble forehead. Christy then asks Peggy if she is single or married. Peggy replies that she is young and has never thought of marriage. Christy tells her that he is also unmarried. Christy then describes his father as drunkard and a raging man who used to curse others like a military officer and was disliked by all his children. During the conversation, there is a knock on the door and another character, Widow Queen, enters. She has come to take away Christy with herself to her own house so that he may not misbehave with Pejin at night. As Widow Queen looks at Christy, she feels attracted towards him. Pejin, 
who is also in love with Christy, tells Widow Queen not to disturb him as he is completely tired. But Widow Queen insists Christy to go to her house as she was sent by Father Rally and Sean Keo. Now Pagin describes the woman to Christy as a murderer of her husband who has killed her husband with an axe. Widow Queen now also wants to stay in the same house but Pagin does not allow her. As Widow Queen leaves, she tells Pagin not to develop any kind of relation with Pagin as she will be soon married with Sean. Pagin tells Christy that it is a lie and she is not going to marry with Sean. Now Christy thanks Pagin for clearing his doubts in this matter and feels happy that two women have fought over him. Summary of Act 2nd This scene is also set in the public house owned by Michael James. In this scene, we see some girls from the village have come to see the young man who has killed his father. They have also brought some presents for Christy. As Pagin has gone out in order to milk the goats, the girls get an opportunity to talk with Christy. As Christy appears before them, Sarah welcomes him and presents Duck's eggs for his food and tells Christy that they are more nutritious than the eggs that Pagin gives him. Then Susan comes forward and gives him butter as present for his food. Honor has brought a cake for him while Nelly gives him a boiled hen. Meanwhile, Widow Queen enters and asks the girls what they are doing there. The girls reply that they have come to see the man who has killed his father. Widow Queen informs them that she has decided to include Christie's name in the supposed competition which is to be held in the day. Widow Queen then asks Christie why he has killed his father. Christie replies that his father wanted him to marry a widow who was 40 years old and was lame and blind in one eye. Christy tells her that it was impossible for him to marry her and he killed his father. Just then, Pagin enters and is shocked to see Christy making marry with Widow Queen and the other girls. Pagin now rebukes Christy for being friendly with Widow Queen and the other girls and narrating his story to everyone. Pagin informs him that she had been to the village and had seen his story in the newspaper. Pagin warns him to be quiet and not to narrate his story otherwise he will be arrested and sentenced to death by torture. Now Christy becomes apprehensive about his fate that awaits him. As Christy feels unsafe, he picks up his rod and gets ready to leave. But Pagin stops him by saying that he has employed him as a waiter and cannot leave. She tells him that she told him lie about his news in the newspaper only to scare him. She also tells him that there had been no news of his father's death in the newspaper. Sean now appears in the company of Widow Queen and asks Christy if he leaves the place and allow him to marry Pagin, he will give him his new hat, his breeches and his blessings. Widow Queen also supports Sean and tells Christy that Pagin doesn't suit him. Christy goes inside the room in order to try the new clothes Sean has brought for him. Sean now asks Widow Queen to help him. Widow Queen tells him that she will marry Christy and in this way Pagin will lose the opportunity to marry Christy. Meanwhile, Christy appears who looks smart in new clothes. Widow Queen now asks Christy to marry her. Christy rejects her proposal because he only thinks about Pagin. As Christy comes out of the room, he sees the spirit of his father coming towards the public house. He tells Widow Queen that he does not know how to hide himself. As old Mahon appears on the threshold, Christy hides himself behind the door. Now old Mahon asks Widow Queen if she has seen a young lad in the morning or on previous night with murderous look and an iron rod in his hand. Widow asks Mahon why he is searching for the young man with such appearance. Mahon replies that he is searching him in order to kill him because he had attacked him with spade and broke his head. Widow Queen tells him that she has not seen such a person and sends him away. As Mahon leaves, Christy regrets that his father is still alive. Widow Queen now once more tries to win the heart of Christy but fails when Christy tells her that he can only see Pagin. Even Christy tells Widow Queen to help him in winning Pagin. As Widow Queen finds that there is no chance for her, she gets ready to help Christy. Meanwhile, the girls from the village come and ask Christy to go with them to the suppose so that he can participate and Christy leaves with them.
Summary of Act Third. In this scene, Jimmy and Philly come back to the public house. Old Mahoon also comes again and asks for liquor from Jimmy and Philly. Video Queen also arrives there and is surprised to see Old Mahoon there. Now, Video Queen privately informs Jimmy and Philly that the man is mad and is falsely claiming that Christy is his son who had broken his head. Suddenly, cheering is heard from a distance and Old Mahoon asks Video Queen what this noise is about. Video Queen tells him that a young champion, the playboy of the western world, is taking part in the sports and people are cheering for him. As Old Mahoon mounts on the bench, he recognizes his son in the mule race. Video Queen now tries again to send away Old Mahoon and tells him that the young fellow is not his son. She tells him that the young fellow is going to marry a rich lady, the daughter of the owner of the public house, and if he still thinks that the young fellow is his son, then he is mad. Old Mahoon is convinced and leaves the public house. Meanwhile, Christy wins and people are making slogans in praise of Christy. When the crowd leaves, Pejin congratulates him on his trip in the games. But Christy tells her that he wants to win Pejin. During their love talk, Michael James arrives from the wake. Now Michael talks about the forthcoming marriage of Pejin and Sean and informs them that the Pope has given the permission which is received by the local priest. But Pejin angrily tells her father that she has changed her decision of marrying Sean and now wants to marry Christy. Her father Michael James objects to her decision. Sean, who is also present there, scolds Pejin for having decided to marry Christy. Pejin tells her father that it would be low for her to marry a person like Sean. Christy now threatens to murder Sean if he again clamored to marry Pejin. As Christy picks up a spade to attack Sean, he flees in terror. Michael James is now ready to marry his daughter with Christy. Suddenly, Old Mahoon is again noticing rushing towards public house. He is followed by people and Widow Queen. As Old Mahoon enters, he attacks Christy, knocks him down and beats him. When Pejin asks Old Mahoon who he is, he replies that he is Christy's father. Pejin turns to Christy and tells him that he has deceived her by telling lies. She tells Christy to leave the place because he is a treacherous man. Meanwhile, Old Mahoon comes forward and tells Christy to go with him to his native village. Christy warns him not to come forward and picks up a spade, attacks him again and chases his father out of the door. As Christy enters again in the public house, Video Queen tells him that the public has turned against him. Now a village girl called Sarah enters and informs them that the public has decided to hang Christy. Both Video Queen and Sarah offer to help Christy, which he rejects. Now Michael James and others decide to hand over Christy to the police. Michael James, Pejin and other men now tie Christy with a rope. Meanwhile, Old Mahoon now comes crawling who has survived from the second blow of spade. He asks his son why he has been tied up. Christy replies that he will be handed over to the police. Old Mahoon unties Christy and tells him to go back to his village. Christy agrees and Old Mahoon is happy. As they leave, Michael James is happy that they have left. Everyone is happy at the end of the play except Peggy who regrets over her loss of Christie.